Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to become the world's fastest ball shaver salesman. What is going on everyone? Welcome to a special episode of Yammy Noob. You guys have been requesting this one and today we are testing the Honda CBR 1000 RR SP Fireblade here on track. We're at Eagles Canyon Raceway, my home facility, preferred facility. You guys have seen me test tons of bikes here on track. It's a 2.7 mile course, it's about 15 different turns, lots of lefts and rights, off cambers, downhill, good straightaway. Great spot to test the fire blades potential. Now, if you guys want the full lowdown on the specs on this machine, we've already covered a bunch of videos, so we're not going to cover the specs on this bike. What we are going to do is go over the electronic settings and all the other settings we have on this bike for today and kind of go over what the theme of the video is today. Now, a lot of you are looking at this fire blade and you're saying, Yammy, that's a $30,000 track day toy for 42 year old dentist who wants to LARP and cosplay as a MotoGP rider. Now, you might be accurate in that, but you yourself can cosplay as a MotoGP rider if you win this thing for free. Hit the link down below, the yammynew.co, enter to win this motorcycle. It is a giveaway bike. It's hard to believe, I know, but it is in fact a giveaway motorcycle. Now, the theme of today's video is understanding if this bike makes sense as a track day toy. What do you actually get when you spend $30,000 on a motorcycle that's ostensibly designed to just be wheeled out every once in a while on the racetrack? Is it actually worth it? And what does it even feel like to ride? Let's find out. All right, guys, in this section, I'll be covering the settings and some of the changes I made to this motorcycle for today's track day. If you want to skip ahead and just see me railing this thing around the racetrack, go ahead and use the chapters feature on this video, and you can just go ahead and scrub and see the part of the video you want to see. Now, this bike is bone stock. We have not changed a single actual thing on this motorcycle. All we've done is get the settings right. So we're on the absolutely bone stock Bridgestone RS11 tires. Pretty good tire, um, not my favorite in the world. They do prefer a Q4. We've got the tire pressure at 31 front and 31 rear, a little bit lower for that track day style riding. We've got the automatic electronic suspension set to the A1 track mode. I didn't want to get in there and fiddle with the rebound compression and preload. I just, I just said, you know what? This bike is probably smarter than me. Yeah. I will let it sort itself out. We've got power at one, which is the max setting, of course. Torque control is at three, so it's a little bit of a lighter intrusion on that, but not no intrusion intrusion whatsoever because this bike does make a ton of horsepower and I would like some traction control while I'm out there having some fun. Uh, we've got wheelie control at two, so that's a semi-light wheelie control. Want to let the front wheel float a little bit. Engine braking is at three, so we've got medium engine braking. Our quick shifter is at medium, which is a semi-aggressive setting. I thought that the stock quick shifter setting was a little too soft and I realized I could change it, so that was pretty cool. The steering stabilizer is also at a medium setting as well. So those are our baseline settings for this bike. It's pretty much in full track day trim and ready to go. It's basically a race bike with lights, so it's not like you need to change a bunch of stuff, but we're gonna find out today if there are things you do need to change on it. So let's get it out on the track and see how it feels. Alrighty, ladies and germs, we are here on track with the Honda Fireblade. I just pitted out, so uh, I'm getting the tires nice and warmed up. Since this is a street bike on street tires, I want to do a nice good job of getting it warmed up. Don't want to push super hard right out of the gate. So, first things first, you got to know about this Honda. Oh, it's so buttery smooth, man. This thing is just feels like it's been buttoned up by the gods, you know? It just, the build quality, the refinement, the way literally everything feels is just incredible. The first thing you notice when you ride something on track is the throttle feel. The throttle is your number one connection to a motorcycle, like on the street, but especially on track, you know? And this one thinks a lot for you. It's a smart throttle. So when it's actually 
only plan like this is giving you all the gas. But then, when you're asking it mid-corner, it ends up thinking a lot for you. Like right here, I'm asking for throttle, and the Honda's saying no. You actually want that much throttle. And I like that. It makes you feel like a superhero. Get some bucks and squirms off this bike, and it is so much fun to ride. Um, it really feels like a giant R6. It's so ridiculous how this motorcycle just wants to be ridden in anger constantly. It's probably why they named it the Fireblade, because it just wants to rip. Nice and easy in the braking zone here. Still theoretically on our warm-up lap. That is so much top-end horsepower, baby. God, I love the engine on this thing. And this thing's not even tuned. I was actually riding on another session with a guy who has a 2017 SP or 2014 SP, I can't remember. And his is all built up and stuff. And he said that on the back straight, I was gapping him by two bike lengths on this stock engine. And I told him that it's not even tuned yet. And he was really blown away by that. So it really goes to show you how many strides Honda's made and how leader bikes have just gotten crazy. One thing about these bikes is that the gears are really long. So you'll see me here on this track mostly in second and third gear. Some places I could be in first, but honestly, I just don't have the testicular fortitude to yeet a leader bike in first gear. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. Lighten it up on the back straight. Keep it nice and conservative here. You don't wanna stuff this more entry level rider on the inside. That'll spook them. So we'll pass them nice and careful up here. There's some track day tips for you guys. You gotta remember, it's not a race. I'm not trying to get ahead of this guy as soon as I can. I'm trying to get at him safely, right? So I think up here, I'll get a little breakaway on the outside. Now I just squeeze by him right there and then we'll continue on our way. <laughs> now, one thing about this Fireblade as well is the brakes are just unbelievable. Let's feel the traction. Yeah! So you've got these giant Brembo Stilemma calipers pinching a 330 mil rotor on this deliciously large master cylinder. This bike brakes like nobody's business. Gonna take our time around this guy. He's running the proper race line. Just gonna get around him nice and easy here. So the brakes are just phenomenal. The brake bite on the initial bite is not crazy, but uh, it's got tons of stopping power. So you gotta brake a little bit harder and then you can get it to really clamp down on those rotors and it really does a great job. I think on this next lap, I'm gonna try to focus up a little bit. Gives you guys a really, really better focused lap. Cause I'll tell you, it's a little difficult to talk and ride a bike like this on track. Even if I am running gingerly, Yeah, man. That's so much juice. What a freaking sweet bike, man. <laughs> I love feeling the traction work and the bike shivvy and squirm. That is so fun. All right. 
we're gonna focus up here give you guys a nice flying lap what do you say let's pay attention now and let's let's do this It's getting a little messed up because this guy's pitting out. I want to be careful with him here. All right, guys. So there's a flying lap on the fire blade. Cruising now, chilling. Where are we? Uh, I kind of want to catch this guy up ahead of me. I think I was chatting with him at my garage. I think he's on that CBR. Let's see if I can catch him. Nah, that's not him. That guy's on a street bike. There's the guy I was chatting with. Oh no, that's Josh. Not Josh from Yami New, but Track Josh, who's stupid fast on his R6. <laughs> He's deep on those brakes. Whoa, that guy's off. <laughs> he tried to follow Josh where he shouldn't have. Y'all gotta be careful when you're following the fast guys. Because those braking zones don't quit. <laughs> they don't play around, baby. Oh, this bike's a ton of fun, man. I bet if I was on my race bike, I could give Josh a run for his money. But how many more excuses can I make? Oh, this bike's $30,000. It's a giveaway bike. I don't want to yeet the thing in the outer space, right? That would really suck. <laughs> yeah, like right here, I think I could be in first, but I love how long the gears are. I can just power out. That's pretty sweet, you know? 
So there's a lot to say about this bike. I think uh, you guys have got a good impression of it on track now. How about we get back to the garage, wrap this video up on those final thoughts. Let's go do it. All right guys, wrapping the day up here with the Honda Fireblade SP. Um, this is a really special motorcycle. That should come as no surprise to you guys watching this video. This thing costs a ton of money. It's Honda's most flagship, most premium, most superlative leader bike they've ever made. And uh, it feels like it, but it's not perfect. I've done about five sessions today, probably turned like 52 laps on this motorcycle and got to know it pretty well on the side of the tire here in racetrack conditions. One thing I want to point out is because it's so expensive and because it's on street tires, I just couldn't really extract the full potential of this machine. I think if you had literally zero abandon for the bike and yourself and the uh, amount of money the thing costs, um, you probably could squeeze some really crazy lap times out of it. But, um, you know, I'm coming from a club racer perspective. Uh, I've probably done about 100 plus track days at this point. I feel pretty confident that I'm in that 70th percentile of track day riders. I am not a professional, not an expert level rider, uh, merely a track day enthusiast who is pretty decent. Um, I even won a club race, right? Let's put it that way. And as a guy at that skill set level, which is higher than most track day enthusiasts, this thing still feels like it's just so far out of what I could do with it. Um, so all those factors combined, I was only able to pull out a 209.5 today on this machine, which is still a good three seconds off the pace of my race bike, my Daytona, and that's just simply down to the fact that I just cannot will myself to do such crazy lap times with it because of how it is. But let's get into some of these notes that I wrote about this motorcycle. Um, the first thing about it is it's just, it's so sublime, it's buttery smooth. Um, the electronics are so different than an R1, for example, or a normal leader bike. Um, the torque control system on this bike really works with you and lets you have some fun. My first session out on this bike, I was a little disheartened with it, let's say, because I felt like it was so serious and so ostentatious and so big, bad, and, you know, imposing, and I was like, you can't have fun with this thing, but then I realized that it's it's literally just an R6 on steroids, and you have to rev it out and beat the crap out of it to really get it to do something and to feel alive. So that's the, the, the big takeaway for me for this bike is you have to ride it like you stole it. It's a race bike. It demands being ridden super duper duper hard. Um, it really enjoys being ridden super hard and the electronics are there and programmed in a way to allow you to do that. Many times off the corner exit, I drive on the apex and I would, I would literally flick the whip 100% and the bike would not give me anything until I was a little more upright, a little bit further off the off the drive, and then it would light it up, control the whole bike, kind of give me a little shimmy and shake because these RS11s just don't have that much grip for the kind of power this thing puts out. Um, and that's really interesting the way it, it works with you, right? But it wants you to constantly push it really, really, really hard. If you don't push it really hard, you're not gonna have fun with this bike. It feels like a giant super scooter, basically. Um, the gears are way too long on this machine. I think the first thing I would do to this bike if it were my bike and I was trying to be serious about track days with it, which is suicidal, but let's just say that um, that that's just what I wanted to do. The first thing I would do is put a spicier sprocket set up on it because it, you, you know you can't get in there and really change out the individual cogs of the gears without really doing some work on this bike. So a simple sprocket change ought to spice in this bike up a little bit. Um, I think that maybe a minus one plus one setup, minus one in the front, plus one in the rear, or just maybe plus two in the rear, um, something like that would allow you to get a little bit more of that drive in the mid range. Um, and that's the other big thing too. It's a double-edged sword because this bike's current tune from the factory is very mellow. Um, the torque comes on super gently until about nine or 10,000 RPM, then it really lights it up. And that's great because you can manage the power with the electronics really easily. You can ride this bike really, really, really hard. There was a guy here who's got a 2014 CBR SP and it's fully built, slicks and all that. And he was saying he was having some trouble keeping up with me a little bit because this bike is just so sorted. He was saying he was watching me brake and the bike is just perfectly, beautifully stable. Um, so this thing has so much inbuilt stability. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed that from it, but you know, it's, 
it's at such a high level that it makes it difficult to, you know, really get your mind around it. But going back to the sprockets here, I think that, you know, the other side of the coin is, well, if you actually get good drive out of this thing and then leave it at 0% traction control, holy crap, this thing would just be an absolute animal, um, an animal of a bike. Probably the spiciest leader bike you could go and buy because if you completely limit the traction control and do the tune and do the exhaust and get that like 210 at the wheel and the, you know, 80 foot pounds of torque at 5,000 RPM, um, this thing be a handful, dude. And it's so unapologetic in its race bike pedigree and its race bike kind of ethos that, you know, it's really not for everybody. I think most people would be better served with a bone stock R1 that they can just have fun with uh, if they want the leader bike experience. This thing is for such a, such a niche kind of person, which I'm gonna get into here in a little bit. The brakes feel excellent. I'd mentioned that on track. The stopping power is tremendous. The initial bite isn't as hard as I would like, but once you actually squeeze on the lever, you get a lot of stopping power, like a, like a lot, um, like race bike levels of stopping power. It's really, really good. You just can't ever stop thinking about the price on this thing. I have to say that again, I, I cannot stop ever thinking about how the fact that I'm on a bike that is a down payment on a house for most people. Um, and it's just like, maybe it's because I come from a more normal place. Maybe if I came from a rich family or something, I wouldn't think twice about riding a $30,000 motorcycle, but I cannot stop thinking about how expensive it is, especially when I'm pushing it a little bit and having fun with it a little bit. I'm like, do I do I really wanna risk it for the biscuit here? Do I really wanna yeet this $30,000 bike? And the answer is probably no. Uh, the suspension is just the nicest thing I've ever felt. Um, the fact that it's completely automatically adjustable, you can just go in there and say, I'd like track mode and it's completely perfectly set up um, is, is sublime. The, these Olins are so nice. They're so nice. The front end feel, the brake dive is so controlled. Um, I, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Really, really good. Uh, the quick shifter is literally perfect and it's adjustable if you don't like it, so there's that too. Um, I will say though, this motorcycle is dense. It's heavy, it's dense, um, side to side. It's a big, heavy leader bike. I think it clocks in at like 441 pounds, wet and ready to ride, which is a big lump, you know? Uh, maybe it's because I'm used to riding my Race Prep Daytona, which is like 365 pounds. Uh, I raced an Endurance Ninja 400 last year as well. I just prefer lighter motorcycles. So for me, despite the fact that this thing handles beautifully, it's still heavy side to side. It's still a bit of a muscly handful kind of motorcycle. The ergonomics are just needlessly punishing on this thing. The first thing I would do with this honestly is get rear sets and lower the pegs a little bit. My feet were so cramped on this thing. Um, and I actually watched a video that, I can't remember what channel it put out, but there was a, a pro racer talking about how that was one of the first things they did on the bike too, is lower the pegs a little bit. Because you still have a ton of clearance just if you lower them by 20 mil and you'll be a lot more comfortable and you can actually rip lap after lap a lot more comfortably on this bike. So that's something I would do from an ergonomics perspective. I will say in the morning when I saw the shadows of my winglets as I was going around corners and stuff, you feel like a million bucks when you're on this thing, man. There's just, there's no other way of putting it. This thing makes you feel like such a fantastic rider. It's there holding you and caring for you. It's really, really a beautiful experience. Um, so I took a couple notes here. I said, who is this bike for, right? I said it's for maybe suicidal dads who need therapy and have too much money to blow. Maybe it's a 42-year-old dentist who wants to cosplay and or LARP as a MotoGP or World Superbike rider. It's maybe for the track junkie who posts those knee-down photos on Instagram but uh, never discusses their lap times. Um, it's definitely for Honda simps and apologists, no doubt about it in my mind. And it's probably for people, as Casey Stoner so famous, put it to Valentino Rossi where their uh, ambition outweighs their talent, let's say. Um, this is a fantastic motorcycle. There's no doubt in my mind that this is one of the most sublime and superlative track day experiences you could possibly have. I think short of a, a V4R or a Superleggera or an R1M, you know, those kinds of, th that's where this bike is playing at. You know, the price tag, the features, um, it, it feels like an absolutely ridiculously capable motorcycle and it's a lot of fun to ride you know if you if you get into the mindset that this is just a giga r6 and you just beat the crap out of it it works really really well but 
For those of you who are looking to learn and to acclimate to track day riding and you want to be smooth and you don't want to ride something in anger 24 seven, this bike's not the right fit for you. Um, but it is very, very cool. And I will leave you with a final unadulterated clip of some raw exhaust footage uh, with me ripping some laps on this thing. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. <laughs>